The drama takes place in Italy. Vincenzo, our main character, goes to find a mob boss to negotiate the return of a farm for his organization, but his efforts fail. After the mob boss's refusal to return the farm and his condescending remarks about Asians, a crop-dusting plane flies over his farm, showering it with gasoline instead of insecticide. Vincenzo walks away as flames engulf the farm behind him. Returning to the house of the recently deceased mafia boss Fabio, Paolo, his son and heir, speaks with Vincenzo. Jealous of Vincenzo's unwavering trust from the boss, more so than his own, Paolo devises a plan to assassinate Vincenzo. That night, at Vincenzo's luxurious residence, three men armed with guns barge in. After smashing through the door, they ruthlessly open fire on the person lying on the bed. As they gleefully pull back the covers to check, Vincenzo, from behind, calmly takes them down, one by one. After Vincenzo's warning call, his house is spared, but Paolo's prized sports car outside explodes. This is Vincenzo's last act of loyalty to the boss before he leaves for his homeland. Back in Korea, Hong Cha Young and her father are on opposing sides in court, each defending their respective clients. Meanwhile, Vincenzo, having just landed at the airport, hails a taxi. After drinking a bottle of water in the taxi, he falls asleep. It turns out that the taxi driver and his accomplices are robbers who steal Vincenzo's belongings and leave, politely leaving behind 50,001 for him to take a bus. At the GM Plaza building, Vincenzo meets director Choi, who shows him around the building and arranges his accommodation. This is the building Vincenzo had helped a Chinese mob boss acquire in the past, where he'd hidden a large amount of gold. Currently, the Babel group is trying to buy the building, facing resistance from the residents. Vincenzo's arrival draws the attention of the residents, who suspect he's there to demolish the building. Hong Hu Chan, a lawyer representing the residents opposing the demolition, meets with Vincenzo to understand his intentions for the building. That evening, after showering, Vincenzo looks at Hong Hu Chan's business card and remembers the case of the housekeeper who was murdered earlier. The next morning, Director Choi informs Vincenzo that they will be meeting the head of the Construction and Development Department of Babel Group. In the meeting, the head of the department offers a substantial amount of money to purchase the building, but Vincenzo remains resolute. Unable to convince Vincenzo, the department head threatens trouble if they don't comply, but it doesn't affect Vincenzo. After the meeting, Vincenzo interacts with the building residents, promising to be on their side, rebuild the building, and offer them the option to rent again. As a result, all the residents, trusting Vincenzo's sincerity, raise their hands in support. However, attorney Hong Yu Chan still doesn't completely trust him. That night, at Director Choi's house, his wife and son are held hostage by strangers, while he is beaten and forced to sign a contract transferring ownership of the GM Plaza building to Babel Group. The next morning, as Cha Young arrived at her office, she received a package addressed to her. It was the guardianship relinquishment document from her father, officially releasing her from his guardianship. Meanwhile, Vincenzo received a call from Director Choi, who revealed that his wife and son were being held hostage and he was forced to sign the papers for the building's sale. Before the call could end, Director Choi's car was struck head-on by a speeding truck. At the GM Plaza building, Babel Group had their people seal all the rooms. Then, they confronted Hong Hu Chan and the residents, announcing their ownership of the building. They used thugs to intimidate everyone. Faced with their aggression, no one dared to oppose them except Cha Young. Seeing the injustice, she argued back but was met with force. As one of the thugs attempted to assault her, Vincenzo appeared from afar. Seeing his scholarly appearance, the thug, used to bullying the weak, charged at him, but Vincenzo effortlessly knocked him down with a single blow. The group's leader, seeing his comrade fall, lunged at Vincenzo, but Vincenzo effortlessly lifted him by the collar and hung him precariously over the balcony. He warned, Babel Group has illegally seized this building. I will not tolerate such disgraceful actions. I will reclaim this building and make you all pay. Vincenzo's actions were met with applause from everyone as he was the first person to stand up to Babel Group and protect them. After being hoisted up, Director Pack ordered his men to attack Vincenzo, but they were stopped by a report that there were numerous reporters waiting below. Back at attorney Hong Yu Chan's office, he remained unconvinced that Director Choi was forced to sign the building's sale documents, even after Vincenzo explained it to him. To make matters worse, his beautiful daughter kept poking fun at him. 
Just as he was getting frustrated trying to explain the situation, a group of reporters barged in. Yu Chan finally understood that Vincenzo was the one who tipped them off. Vincenzo's actions left a strong impression on Cha Young. She immediately pursued him to discuss it, also making a strong impression on Vincenzo with her intelligence. As if by accident, she questioned why a lawyer would be more passionate than the client, especially a European lawyer like him. If so, she reasoned, there must be something even more valuable than the building. At the hospital, Vincenzo visited director Choi. Although critically injured, Choi urged Vincenzo to demolish the building before Babel Group got to the gold. Returning to his memories, Vincenzo was reporting to the Chinese boss on the design of his vault. The room was designed so that any intruders would trigger a collapse, burying them. Everyone involved in the construction and aware of the vault's existence had been eliminated after its completion, except for director Choi and Vincenzo. The only way to retrieve the gold was to demolish the building. A year earlier, Vincenzo had read in the newspaper that the Chinese boss had suddenly died from a heart attack. Knowing the boss's character, no one, including his own family, knew about the existence of the gold. Vincenzo, therefore, approached director Choi to collaborate in retrieving the gold. In a cramped police station, Vincenzo was reported as a prime target for elimination by his own associates. However, the police chief, contrary to the excitement from his officers, remained indifferent, seeing no threat from Vincenzo. At attorney Hong's office, while he was reviewing the case files against Babel Group, Vincenzo arrived and asked for his help in obtaining all the relevant information. Initially, he refused, but Vincenzo's sincerity eventually persuaded him. After studying the provided documents, Vincenzo couldn't help but call Babel Group's actions filthy, a sentiment shared by Cha Young, who was working as a lawyer defending their interests. After completing his research, Vincenzo joined Cha Young for lunch, but no restaurant would serve them, as they were mistaken for betrayers. During the meal, Cha Young warned Vincenzo not to challenge Babel Group, as they had control over everything, from the government and police to the prosecution office. In a separate development, Vincenzo visited attorney Hong and invited him to Babel Group's headquarters to meet the head of the construction department. Vincenzo claimed to have a lawsuit against him. Confident in his company's strong backing, the department head defiantly challenged them to sue. Vincenzo, ever calm, grabbed the man by the collar and said, If this were in Italy, you'd already be fertilizer for my grapevines. I'm here to warn you, not negotiate. In another development, Choi Myung Hee, a prosecutor who was pressured by her superiors, resigned and was appointed as a senior lawyer for Yu Sang, the same law firm where Cha Young worked, leaving her feeling frustrated. Meanwhile, at attorney Hong's office, they were brainstorming ways to delay the demolition of the Jiam Plaza building by Babel Group. At a meeting at Yu Sang, after introducing Choi Myung Hee, they discussed providing legal protection for the demolition of the GM Plaza building and decided to proceed with the demolition at 11 p.m. the following night. Learning this, Cha Young, after calling her father more than 30 times without getting an answer, rushed home to warn him and the residents to leave. It turned out he was drinking with Vincenzo. At that moment, he received a call from a witness, informing him of the results of the drug trial. He had to rush to meet the witness. The next evening, at the Babel Group office, all the machinery, personnel, and thugs had gathered and were preparing to begin the demolition. Cha Young couldn't remain calm knowing her father was still inside the building. She raced to the scene, only to find a lively outdoor party in full swing, with all the participants seemingly enjoying themselves. To Cha Young's bewilderment, Vincenzo calmly approached with a glass of wine in hand and politely invited her to join the party. Meanwhile, Babel Group's men arrived and seemed taken aback by the scene. One of the thugs stepped forward to assess the situation. He was shocked to see police officers they knew were present, and even more surprised when he was pointed towards the Italian ambassador who was also attending the party. On the balcony, Cha Young questioned Vincenzo's true motives. With her sharp intelligence, she realized that his actions weren't simply driven by a heroic urge or selflessly protecting the residents. Seeing the impossibility of proceeding with the demolition, Director Park ordered his men to retreat. This meant victory for the residents of the building, who rejoiced and placed their full trust in Vincenzo. As for Vincenzo, he returned to his room to continue devising a plan, knowing that relying on this kind of party trick wouldn't be enough to stop them forever. 
Cha Young, on the other hand, began investigating this charismatic, talented, and enigmatic lawyer. At Attorney Hong's office, after meeting with the witness, he learned that Babel Group was developing an addictive painkiller. He vowed to stop it at all costs, but he couldn't figure out how to do it, as the witness refused to testify. In a different development, Vincenzo called the head of Babel Group's construction department and presented him with two conditions. First, the building had to be demolished within two months. Second, the demolition company had to be chosen by him. To emphasize his words, Vincenzo showed him a list of real estate companies using black funds and a list of businesses that he had threatened using the underworld. To top it off, he also presented a photo of the department head with his mistress at a hotel. This final blow completely knocked him off balance. In another development, just as Director Park ordered his men to once again begin demolishing the building, he received a call demanding an immediate stop to the demolition. The next morning, on television, Attorney Hong learned that the secret laboratory where the drug was being developed had exploded due to a gas leak. All the people inside were killed. This news angered and outraged Hong Cha Young. He and Vincenzo went to the scene, but the police wouldn't let them in and quickly closed the investigation. At a restaurant, Babel Group's chairman, Jang Han Seo, was having lunch with Yu Sang's law firm director and Myung Hee. Myung Hee was scoring points with him proving to be a dangerous individual. Meanwhile, Attorney Hong received a call from the witness, who was ready to testify. He knew about the murder of the witnesses at the lab and was afraid he would be next. He wanted to cooperate and reveal the truth. Vincenzo, on the other hand, resolved not to get involved in other matters and focus on his work. In the residence room, he agreed to rent them a nearby building for free, while they waited for their building to be demolished and rebuilt. Cha Young received a notice from Myung Hee to withdraw from all Babel Group lawsuits, as her father was an opposing party and they feared she would be biased because of her feelings. Cha Young, a strong-willed woman, was unhappy about this and went to her father's office to confront him. At Myung Hee's house, she ordered someone to eliminate the final witness and anyone else who knew of his existence. In a room, the witness was writing down everything he knew when someone knocked on the door. Claiming to be a police officer, he demanded to enter to check. Sensing something amiss in the police officer's voice, the witness quickly scrambled to hide his papers and jumped out the window to escape. His intuition was right. The police officer was actually an assassin sent by Myung Hee to eliminate the witness. After escaping the house, the witness hid in an old ship and called attorney Hong, but he didn't answer. Soon, they found him. At that moment, Attorney Hong was having drinks with Vincenzo at a bar. As he stepped out to smoke, his phone rang. That was the most important call he missed. As he tried to call back, a speeding truck crashed into the bar, hitting their table and throwing both of them into unconsciousness. Cha Young rushed to the scene, but it was too late. Her beloved father had died in the accident. But the tragedy didn't end there. A smear campaign against Attorney Hong was launched after his death. He was falsely accused of accepting bribes and being investigated by the police, aiming to tarnish his reputation among the public. However, those he had helped never forgot him. They expressed their respect by leaving notes on his law office door. Meanwhile, Vincenzo was still in the hospital. Cha Young visited him and stared at him, his eyes closed, muttering to herself, I cleaned up my father's law firm today, but I couldn't close it. I don't believe it was an accident but I have no proof and don't know where to start. Please wake up and tell me something. The residents of the building were in turmoil after the incident, but Vincenzo's appearance calmed them. They were talking when Park and his men arrived, seemingly gleeful at Attorney Hong's death. Cha Young went to the law office and submitted her resignation. Back in his room, after some thought, Vincenzo went to the scene of the accident to investigate. He then made a decision and called Director Choi. At his home, Babel Group's chairman, Jang Han Seo, entered his bedroom and found his pillow covered with syringes a warning. At Myung Hee's place, they were puzzled as to how someone could get past their tight security and break into the chairman's bedroom. Suspicion fell on Cha Young, and the police arrived to apprehend her. They intentionally made things difficult and detained her at the police station, having been bribed by Babel Group. The next morning, when Cha Young didn't return, Vincenzo went to the police station with Cha Young's alibi in hand. After being released from the station, Vincenzo advised her to drop the case against Babel Group, 
as she was alone and limited in power. She finally agreed to cooperate with him and gave him all the documents she had. Then, they went to the police station to question the driver who crashed into the bar. After initially refusing to talk, Vincenzo's cleverness persuaded him to reveal that the one who ordered him was a man named Pai. This information was reported to Myung Hee, and the driver was promptly eliminated to cover up the tracks. After getting Pai's address, Vincenzo found him and quickly subdued him. He then forced him to call his accomplices, luring them into a trap. Both men were apprehended and stubbornly refused to disclose their mastermind. But nothing was impossible for Vincenzo. After firing a shot at one of them, he obtained the information he needed. Myung Hee was dancing to music in a laundromat when she saw a basket of bloody clothes belonging to the two men. She received a picture of them on her phone. Then, the lights went out, and a voice said, Attorney Choi, how do you like death? It's just like the night that happened to Attorney Hong, isn't it? Outside, a truck rammed into her. Terrified, she begged for forgiveness, offering to restore Attorney Hong's reputation and those who participated in the drug trials the next day. In another development, two men with disinfectant tanks entered Babel Group's pharmaceutical warehouse. They chased away the employees and proceeded to spray the warehouse with disinfectant and burn all the RDU-90 drugs. They got into their vehicle and drove away. Just as they left, flames erupted from the warehouse, engulfing it, and nothing could stop the fire. The fire caused significant damage to Babel Group. At the luxurious home of Chairman Jang Han Seo, the real power behind Babel Group appeared. After berating his younger brother, Han Seo, he ordered him to cover up the incident, claiming it was an electrical short circuit, fearing the impact on the company's stock price if the truth got out. Meanwhile, Vincenzo and Cha Young, after their initial victory, were discussing their future plans and strategies to deal with Babel Group. At her office, Myung Hee felt suspicious of Vincenzo's Italian background and decided to meet him to investigate this new opponent. Vincenzo and Cha Young started looking for evidence of Babel Group's violation of labor safety regulations by using the banned substance BLSD in the production of display screens. They then sought out victims to convince them to trust them. At a press conference, in front of a large gathering of reporters, Jang Han SEO proudly announced that his company had successfully produced BLSD screens. After his speech, he shook hands with the workers, but suddenly, one of the workers collapsed. Han Seo panicked and fled the scene. In another development, at an Italian restaurant, a group of thugs decided to change tactics. They went there to eat and cause trouble, hoping to expose the restaurant. However, Vincenzo intercepted them. They returned to their office, where Jang Jun Wu, Cha Young's colleague, informed her he had been promoted to a full-time associate from an intern. During lunch, he expressed his interest in Italian mafia affairs. At the building, the lawyer representing the victims in the labor safety lawsuit against Babel Group arrived to negotiate. He was met by Vincenzo and Cha Young, who presented him with a waiver to dismiss him as their representative. Vincenzo also informed him that he had evidence of Babel Group bribing them with cash. Cha Young and Vincenzo then swaggered into Yu Sang Law Firm to announce that they were now representing the victims of the labor accident. They confidently looked down on the Yu Sang lawyers, believing in their own strength. But upon hearing Vincenzo's voice, Myung Hee instantly recognized him as the one who had threatened her earlier. They couldn't come to an agreement because their positions were different. Before leaving, Vincenzo subtly reminded Myung Hee that they were free to make decisions, but freedom always came with responsibility. At the preliminary hearing for the labor safety violation, Myung Hee was very confident while answering the press questions before entering the courtroom. However, all eyes were on Vincenzo and Cha Young as they arrived in a luxury car, carrying a stack of documents, and made a brief statement. Thick skin means sharp claws. In the distance, protests were taking place, with banners opposing Babel Group's dirty practices. Inside the courthouse, the judge, after being bumped into by a young woman, was meeting with Director Han of the Yu Sang Law Firm and Myung Hee. They seemed to have a secret agreement. As the judge entered the courtroom, he tripped and fell, seemingly foreshadowing some misfortune. The trial began with Myung Hee accusing the plaintiffs of not adhering to labor safety regulations, despite warnings in their manual. When it was the plaintiff's turn to respond, Cha Young suddenly collapsed and fainted. The judge should have postponed the trial, but he declared it would continue. 
Cha Yang sprang to her feet, seemingly unaffected by the fainting spell, and prepared to present evidence. Suddenly, all the lights in the courthouse went out. Reacting quickly and enthusiastically, the judge took notes on his laptop. As Cha Young began to refute the accusations, the room filled with a roaring sound, like an airplane. Someone shouted, Honeybees, they're everywhere. The courtroom erupted in chaos, everyone scrambling to escape. Once order was restored, it was the judge's turn to have problems. His lips were swollen, and he mumbled incoherently for a few seconds before collapsing. The trial was adjourned. At the office, Secretary Nam told Vincenzo that on the third of every month, Attorney Hong would visit a woman named Oh Jun Eon. Vincenzo went to meet her and told her that no one would visit her anymore. At Yu Sang Law Firm, Myung Hee was boasting to Director Han about her clever schemes. When she arrived at Cha Young's office, she brought a potted plant as a gift, but it had a hidden listening device. She thought it was a brilliant trick, but Vincenzo was even more cunning. He knew about the device but pretended not to, so the only information Myung Hee obtained was what Vincenzo intentionally provided. Vincenzo and Cha Young enjoyed dinner together at an upscale restaurant. He asked her to help him reclaim the building and revealed the secret of the GM Plaza building. It contained 1.5 tons of gold. Cha Young was shocked, as the amount of gold was beyond her imagination, making her think that Vincenzo was a con artist. That night, using the testing equipment provided by Director Choi, Vincenzo went into the priest's room and measured the security system of the gold vault. He discovered that the system was active. In another development, at a high-level meeting of Babel Group, Jang Jun Wu, the intern, made his public appearance in his new role as the company's true owner, before Chairman Han Seo, Director Han, and Myung Hee. After some light banter, Jang Jun Wu began to exercise his authority. He first ordered Myung Hee to prepare a list of items needed to buy the Namdingbu Public Prosecutor's Office. Then, he complained about her performance at the previous day's trial. Finally, he instructed Myung Hee to eliminate Vincenzo, just like they had done with others before. Back in her office, Myung Hee began calling her accomplices to carry out the plan. Their first victim was the accountant for the Babel Group Labor Accident Victims Association. Two strangers beat him unconscious, hid money in his house, took a picture, and leaked it to the news, accusing him of embezzlement. As a result, the victims were detained at the police station for questioning, and would be unable to participate in the trial. Next, a series of witnesses became entangled in various problems, preventing them from attending the trial. At the trial, Myung Hee, learning from previous experience, had taken all necessary precautions and felt confident of victory as no witnesses would be present. However, someone unexpectedly appeared as a witness. Everyone in the courtroom turned around, eyes wide with surprise. The witness entering was none other than Vincenzo, the lawyer who had just assaulted several Babel Group employees. They had to object to him being a witness. Thinking this, Myung Hee spoke up in opposition. However, Vincenzo presented crucial evidence, the head of the construction and development department's phone, which he had secretly obtained during his scuffle. It contained messages revealing that the company had deliberately concealed information and threatened the victims. After presenting the phone, Vincenzo handed it to Cha Young, who submitted it to the judge. Taking advantage of everyone's distraction, Myung Hee subtly whispered something to the judge. Vincenzo then turned his attention to Babel Group's witness, Director Kim, the head of the hospital. He accused him of intentionally misleading the victims, knowing the connection between the BLSD display screens and leukemia. Director Kim couldn't help but laugh in response. Myung Hee, as usual, accused Vincenzo of making false accusations. Just as the judge and a fellow juror were starting to side with her, Vincenzo introduced another witness, Kim Ya, the director of the Sound Hospital's Cancer Center, an expert on leukemia and also the wife of Director Kim. Myung Hee jumped up in panic, but she couldn't control the situation. Director Kim Ja presented her evidence, a USB drive containing emails between Director Kim and a professor about BLSD treatment methods. They revealed that due to a lack of processing equipment, the BLSD material had leaked, causing the researchers to develop leukemia. At this point, even the biased judge could no longer help Babel Group. After five years, the case was closed, and justice was served for the victims. Feeling defeated after his series of losses, Jang Jun Wu, furious, smashed his car and berated Myung Hee for her incompetence. 
he gave her three days to deal with Cha Young and Vincenzo. Back in her office, Myung Hee vented her anger on her staff, ordering them to investigate everything related to Cha Young. In a separate development, director Choi called Vincenzo to inform him that he had invited a highly experienced Japanese professor who specialized in dismantling old buildings. The professor knew how to break through tunnels and would arrive that night. Meanwhile, Myung Hee, aiming to secure her position, invited the police chief to dinner to bribe him. However, he immediately called her out for her attempt and scolded her harshly. After taking the Japanese professor to see the building, Vincenzo realized it was impossible to break through the tunnel because the building's quality was too poor. He met with director Choi on the rooftop to discuss the problem and find a solution. They had only 10 days left before the demolition deadline. Downstairs, in the dining room of the Italian restaurant, everyone was listening to a homeless man's story. He claimed that the building contained a lot of gold and that the people who moved it were killed after the job. He said he saw it while hiding in a bar. The others laughed, thinking he was delusional. When they didn't believe him, he pulled out a phone he said he found, showing a photo of a worker posing beside a towering pile of gold. Of course, no one believed a homeless man like him. The next morning, Vincenzo and Cha Young announced they had purchased a nearby building to accommodate the residents. Everyone was overjoyed, but then Park and his men arrived. Their arrogant attitude made the residents refuse to move and decide to fight them. This made Vincenzo smile on the outside but feel pain on the inside. To make matters worse, the police arrived to arrest Cha Young, accusing her of embezzlement, forgery, and tax evasion. Knowing this was a scheme by Myung Hee, Vincenzo followed her to a casino. He offered her a choice, she would release Cha Young in exchange for his help in approaching the prosecutor general, whom she had failed to reach before. In another development, to delay the demolition of the building, Vincenzo devised a daring plan. He found the head of Babel Group's construction department and persuaded him to give the green light to Park and his men to use violence against the building residents. Then, he secretly filmed their actions. As they arrived, the residents of the building engaged in a brawl, creating a huge commotion that required police intervention. At the station, both groups continued to argue with no resolution. Just then, Vincenzo and Cha Young arrived. Vincenzo immediately called Kim Dong Ho, the student he assigned to record the events. After watching the video, the police could no longer make things difficult for them. To celebrate their victory, the residents organized a party. Despite their bruised faces from the brawl, everyone was joyous. They had complete faith in Vincenzo. Meanwhile, at Yu Sang law firm, Jang Jun Wu was harshly reprimanding Myung Hee, even hinting at her termination. However, Myung Hee, driven by her competitive spirit, fought back, her anger fueled by not only losing but losing to Vincenzo twice. She no longer seemed afraid of Jang Jun Wu's authority and her words focused solely on her revenge against Vincenzo. This intrigued Jang Jun Wu. During a negotiation regarding compensation for the victims, where Vincenzo and Cha Young were representing the victims and Myung Hee was on Babel Group's side, she refused to pay the large sum demanded and arrogantly turned to leave. However, Jang Jun Wu, still in his role as her assistant, expertly intervened and insisted on accepting the compensation. In another development, the excessive compensation amount made it impossible for Babel Group executives to get loans from banks, leading to their dismissal by Jang Jun Wu. At the hospital, after receiving news, Vincenzo and Cha Young rushed to see Oh Jong Ja. She was receiving treatment and, lacking any family, was reluctant to continue it. Meanwhile, Myung Hee, using her personal connections, approached a prominent bank executive to request a loan. Initially, he refused, considering Babel Group's precarious financial situation. However, in true mafia style, Myung Hee threatened to expose his past indiscretions, leaving him no choice but to accept her terms. Cha Young received news that Oh Jong Ja had filed for a stay of execution and immediately went to see her. Han Min Song, the son of the man who wrongfully framed Oh Jong Ja, arrived before her, carrying an envelope and offering her a bribe. He claimed the money would be enough to last her a lifetime if she kept quiet. Thinking money could buy everything, she lunged at him, ready to attack her enemy. The news that Xin Guang Bank had decided to invest in Babel Group made Cha Young and Vincenzo disappointed. They thought they were close to dismantling the company, but now it was being revived. 
Cha Young also revealed to Vincenzo that Xin Guang Bank's chairman was the one who framed O Zhongjia. The situation was not resolved, and now it was connected to Babel Group. So they decided to shift their focus to Xin Guang Bank, with their first target being Han Min Song, the bank's director. His weakness was his sexual attraction to men, making the pretty boy tactic a perfect strategy. Vincenzo fit the role of a charming young man perfectly. It seemed he had captivated Han Min Song with his beauty. They went drinking, and while intoxicated, Han Min Song started revealing the truth about his father's death and how they framed Oh Jong Ja. To further their connection, they scheduled a date at the park. Vincenzo, with his acting skills that rivaled a veteran actor, made Han Min Song infatuated with him. After making him wait for five hours in the rain, Vincenzo appeared, and his words were now the truth. At a luxurious hotel, Zhang Hansio, confident and self-assured, was preparing for the signing ceremony for the investment partnership with Xin Guang Bank, which they were 99% certain of securing. However, things took an unexpected turn. Just as he was about to sign, Han Min Song saw Vincenzo, perched high above, sending him heart-shaped balloons. Responding to the call of love, Han Min Song stood up and refused to sign the contract. He even made a public announcement in front of numerous cameras, declaring that Babel Group was unethical and untrustworthy. Myung Hee and her team were ready to celebrate their victory, but the plot thickened when Han Min Song's mother arrived as the chairman and signed the contract with Babel Group. Myung Hee was pleased, as she had manipulated both Han Min Song and his mother by threatening to expose their personal scandals. There was no choice but to comply. Han Min Song, after being dismissed by his mother, stepped into the hallway only to be ambushed by two men. They subdued him and took him to a room filled with corpses. As he escaped in a panicked state, he ran into the police with an arrest warrant for threatening and killing someone. This time, even his mother couldn't save him. While they were a little disappointed at not being able to completely dismantle Babel Group, Cha Young and Vincenzo found some solace in having achieved justice for Oh Jong Ja. That night, alone, Vincenzo recalled the doctor's words about Oh Jong Ja's condition, terminal lung cancer. He also learned that she had discovered her illness and decided to leave him at the orphanage. Meanwhile, at the building, everyone, upon learning about the gold hidden within, started secretly searching for it. Back with Jang Jun Wu, as he was strategizing against Vincenzo, he received a call demanding $30 million from director Kim Dong Un. If he didn't pay, Dong Un threatened to expose Jun Wu's true identity and reveal the truth about his father's death to the public. That evening, at a dinner party orchestrated by Myung Hee, the collaboration between the prosecutor and Babel Group was essentially complete. However, on their way back, the car carrying the prosecutor was stopped by an unknown vehicle. Men with bats emerged from the car, forcefully taking everyone inside. Cha Young was about to leave Vincenzo's room to go to her own when a masked man wielding a hammer emerged from the shadows. She tried to scream for help, but the man shoved her into a corner and was about to attack when Vincenzo arrived in time to subdue him and save her. In another development, the people who kidnapped the prosecutor were Jang Han Seo and Myung Hee. They tied both the prosecutor and his subordinate in a container and planned to use them as leverage. The prosecutor was threatening them when someone in a martial arts uniform and wielding a staff emerged. Without a word, he attacked the prosecutor's subordinate, knocking him unconscious. The prosecutor, terrified, immediately knelt and begged for mercy, willing to do whatever they wanted. This was Jang Jun Wu, a cold-blooded individual with a seemingly innocent facade. Cha Young, traumatized by the attack, went to Vincenzo's place to sleep. The next morning, while eating breakfast, they learned about the prosecutor's death, staged as an accident. At Jang Jun Wu's house, upon learning of his brother's latest trouble, he unleashed his fury on him. In a separate development, director Choi informed Vincenzo that he had found the crucial data related to the Chinese gold owner. The most difficult part was now solved. The next steps were to survey the situation and create a plan. Vincenzo went to the priest's room to assess the security system. He tried to leave the monastery but couldn't. The next morning, watching television news about the arrests of two bank directors who refused to cooperate with Babel Group, Vincenzo immediately suspected Myung Hee's manipulation to pressure the prosecutor. They quickly contacted Prosecutor Choi, an honest prosecutor who was handling the Kim Dong-un case. 
They met at a restaurant to discuss the information Dong Un had about Babel Group's chairman and the company owner's death. However, Jun Wu's men recorded the entire conversation. In another development, at a meeting with key personnel, Jang Hansio announced that they would be resuming the large-scale production of the painkiller, RDU-90, the following week. He instructed them to double the security at the warehouse. Cha Young received a call from Prosecutor Choi, informing her that he would cooperate with them, a significant change in his staunch principles. That night, Vincenzo and Cha Young attempted to break into Kim Dong-un's hideout, but they were too late. The prosecutor and all those involved had been killed, eliminating all traces. It turned out that Jang Han Seo had secretly been monitoring everything, from phone tapping to social media, and they had identified the individuals involved in the RDU-90 warehouse fire. This is why they ruthlessly took revenge on them, staging their deaths as suicides. The police, intentionally overlooking the truth, chose to ignore the suspicions raised by Cha Young. Vincenzo, feeling guilty for allowing them to get involved in the warehouse fire, began to formulate a plan for revenge, determined to make them pay for their actions. In a public billiard hall, two corrupt cops, smugly opening a locker to collect their share of the spoils, were surprised by Vincenzo's sudden appearance, phone in hand. Assuming it was just Vincenzo, they charged at him, intending to beat him up. However, the situation quickly turned against them. Within two minutes, both were bound together on a chair. Vincenzo demanded the case files of the four victims, including all relevant reports and statements. He then forced them to immediately resign or face the same fate as their victims. Back at his apartment, Vincenzo received a call from a friend, alerting him that someone was secretly investigating his past. Thanks to the documents provided by the two cops, they learned about the details surrounding the deaths of the four people on the bus and identified the culprit. However, bringing them to justice wouldn't be easy, as the public prosecutor had been bribed. Meanwhile, at Yu Sang Law Firm, Jun Wu discussed matters with Myung Hee. After surviving several close calls with her, he seemed to have developed a begrudging respect for her. At GM Plaza, the residents began brainstorming a unique method to fight back against Babel without revealing their identities. They decided to wear masks and record videos exposing the corrupt practices of Babel Group and Yu Sang Law Firm, including their fraud, bribery, and manipulation. But their efforts were soon forgotten. Vincenzo began acting according to his own plan. Back at his own home, Han Song Huck was startled to find his desk plate bearing a chilling warning. Myung Hee, too, was terrified as she found her power suddenly cut off, followed by a shadowy figure approaching her, causing her to faint. The figure left behind a bloody C on her window, serving as a warning. The next target was the chairman of Babel Group. As Jang Han Seo stepped out to get into his car, surrounded by a large group of bodyguards, a toy car with explosives and a timer attached to its trunk sped towards him. Facing imminent death, everyone panicked and scattered, but the car continued to chase Han Seo. Cornered against a wall, he slumped down, covering his head, bracing for the explosion. However, when the bomb detonated, it only produced a sound like a champagne cork popping and revealed a bloody C flag. Information about Vincenzo's time in Italy was delivered to Jun Wu. Realizing he was facing a formidable adversary, Jin Yu began to devise his own counter strategy. At a large noodle restaurant, a group of masked men jumped out of a vehicle and attacked, silently launching a vicious assault. Meanwhile, to draw out the mastermind behind the operation, Vincenzo took a risk. He spread a fake rumor that he was going to the tunnel where the four victims were held captive to investigate. Hoping to catch him off guard, he posted the information online, expecting them to come looking for him. Back at the noodle restaurant, the masked assailants continued to wreak havoc, even as residents of the building tried to intervene. They threatened everyone, giving them a three-day ultimatum to leave the building or face the consequences. To demonstrate their ruthlessness, one of the men grabbed Seo Mai Rai and threatened to harm her. Just when everyone thought they were doomed, a knife plunged into the attacker's shoulder. Hong Sik slowly approached, wielding the knife. As each man lunged, they met his blade, and soon, every attacker was injured. Realizing they had met their match, they fled the building. Jun Wu, having just instructed his men to find Vincenzo in the tunnel, was surprised to find Cha Young arriving. He feigned ignorance, calling her senior, and then, along with his secretary, ma'am, joined her on her way to meet Vincenzo. In the tunnel, as Vincenzo had predicted, 
Three men were waiting. After an intense gunfight, two were eliminated, and the surviving one, although injured, remained defiant, refusing to reveal the identity of his boss. Just then, Cha Young and the others arrived, and upon setting foot in the tunnel, she rushed towards Vincenzo, embracing him as if they had been apart for a long time. Vincenzo, now knowing the true identity of the mastermind, felt a sense of resolution. Vincenzo revealed that Jang Han Siak was the mastermind behind everything, orchestrating everything from behind the scenes. He then took the phone from the assassin and called the person who was known as Chairman. Nearby, Jun Wu's phone in his jacket pocket buzzed. Vincenzo asked why he wasn't answering, but Jun Wu pulled out a different phone from his pants pocket and said, No one called me. He continued to act clueless. Two figures approached them Vincenzo's shadows who had been tasked with protecting Cha Young. Vincenzo and Cha Young told Jun Wu to go back, stating that this was an exception, and he should not get involved again. Outside, Jun Wu angrily smashed his phone, unable to comprehend how Vincenzo managed to take down all three assassins. Meanwhile, the assassins were trapped in their car, with a gas line pumping poison inside. Initially, they refused to confess, but when the toxic smoke filled the car, they quickly admitted their crimes. They had set fire to Chairman Zhang's mansion, murdered the researchers, killed Chief Prosecutor Gil and the investigating officers, and orchestrated the staged suicide of the four people. They begged for mercy, claiming they were simply following Zhang Han Siok's orders. However, they had never met him in person and only communicated through phone calls. Furthermore, they revealed that Zhang Han Siok was still in Korea, not abroad. Vincenzo, having witnessed the extent of their crimes, could not spare their lives. He ordered his men to inject them with a poison that rendered them unconscious, then pushed the car into a lake. The quick and relatively painless death was a final act of mercy from him. Back at the building, Vincenzo and Hong Cha Young were enjoying a drink, laughing and talking. No one would guess that they had been through such harrowing events just a few hours prior. As the alcohol took effect, Cha Young apologized for unexpectedly hugging Vincenzo earlier, but she couldn't understand why her heart had raced so quickly. She asked him to stand up so she could analyze the situation, then continued to hold him close. Once her experiment was complete, she claimed it wasn't a sign of romantic feelings, but simply a result of the stressful situation. The next day, Vincenzo visited Joan Jia. He questioned her about the events of 28 years ago and learned that she had a son but sent him away to a place where he could live happily because of a medical condition. However, Vincenzo believed that no child could be truly happy without their mother. He had heard Cha Young mention that Zhong Jia had accepted shame and illness out of guilt. He encouraged Zhong Jia to believe that her son was likely living well and to focus on her own health. The chairman called Vincenzo, revealing that they had investigated the phone number used by the chairman but found only a burner phone with all data erased. They were only able to retrieve the last call the one made by the assassin to Jang Han Siak. This call originated from the tunnel, meaning that Jang Han Siak was close by. Meanwhile, Gi Siak brought food to the building, hoping to eavesdrop, but Vincenzo caught him and told him to leave. However, Vincenzo later discovered that Gi Siak was still lurking nearby. When Gi Siak was caught, he started dancing wildly and disappeared, leaving everyone bewildered. At Naniak Temple, the police arrived after receiving a complaint about a monk who was excessively demanding donations from his followers and not holding sermons. Nearby, Yong Un appeared. At the teacher's office, Miss Seo invited the group to play a game of mafia. Vincenzo initially refused but was eventually forced to participate. As they were playing, the police entered, looking for Vincenzo for attempted murder, assault, and extortion. They stated that Vincenzo was a mafia advisor from Italy, shocking everyone, especially since they were just playing a game. In a separate scene, Jang Jun Wu was having dinner with Jang Han Siak. He was still haunted by the memory of his phone buzzing in his pocket, feeling like something out of a horror film. Feeling confident that he would never be caught, Han Asio expressed his desire to take over the Babel Pharmaceutical Company. This enraged Jun Wu, who brandished a knife and threatened Han Sio, before using the same knife to cut himself in the neck until Han Sio begged him to stop. Meanwhile, Di Siak informed Chief Prosecutor T. Jong Gu that Vincenzo had been apprehended by the Namdingbu Prosecutor's Office. He wanted to bring Vincenzo in to control him but the chief prosecutor saw no advantage in doing so. 
Gi Siak, seeing an opportunity, tried to provoke the chief prosecutor by highlighting his lack of pride, suggesting that the head of the International Crime Investigation Unit in Korea should not be outmaneuvered by the Namdingbu prosecutor's office. Capturing Vincenzo, he argued, would solidify their position and authority. The cleaning lady also supported Gi Siak's opinion, putting pressure on the chief prosecutor to finally agree to take Vincenzo into custody. Cha Young, as Vincenzo's lawyer, arrived to defend him, arguing that the authorities lacked sufficient evidence, only having some unclear photos. Despite her arguments, Vincenzo was detained for further investigation. Just then, Gi Siak dramatically appeared like a movie star, leading the group away. Upon hearing that Vincenzo had been taken away and was likely a spy, Jun Wu was furious. Gi Siak, knowing that Vincenzo was determined to fight against Wu Song and Babel, wanted to join his side. Even if Vincenzo was a mafia member, Gi Siak didn't mind because he was fighting against evil and seeking justice for the vulnerable. Suddenly, Gi Siak wanted to hug Vincenzo. When Vincenzo reached out to shake his hand, Gi Siak leaped onto him and gave him a passionate hug and kiss, overjoyed at finding a true mentor. Vincenzo examined the photos on the table that Gi Siak had retrieved from the Namdingbu office. He realized they were of an intelligence agent that Jang Han Siak had sent to Italy. The prosecutor had been unable to obtain these photos, meaning the intelligence agent must have met Jang Han Siak in person and knew his face. Vincenzo returned to the building to find everyone celebrating his return with a grand welcome. Owner Tak embraced him, ecstatic that the great mafia Vincenzo was back. Nam Ju Sung brought him a piece of tofu, a common gesture for those newly released from prison. The monks from the temple approached Vincenzo, informing him that they were being harassed by someone who was spreading false accusations about their excessive demands for donations. Vincenzo realized that Yong Un had orchestrated this scheme to quickly acquire the gold. He asked Yong Un to rectify the situation to avoid causing any harm to the temple. Nearby, Miss Seo overheard the conversation but couldn't voice her thoughts before everyone dragged Vincenzo inside. They revealed that the building was full of gold, but they didn't know that all of it belonged to him. That night, Vincenzo's men captured Jang Han Siok's intelligence agent. The agent knew that even if he confessed and was released, he would not survive for more than a week. Vincenzo offered him a chance to live, but the agent refused to believe it. He claimed that he had endured the torture of the Russian Mafia, so nothing could deter him. However, after Vincenzo threatened him with three basic methods, the agent started trembling in fear and confessed that Jang Han Siak was actually the Wusang lawyer, Jang Jun Wu. At the moment, Jang Jun Wu was with Cha Young, handing her the compensation withdrawal report that Choi Myung Hee had sent to Jang Han Sio. Cha Young was furious because Han Sio had claimed on television that he would provide compensation. She called him a scumbag. Vincenzo called Cha Young, revealing a secret that left her stunned, but she still tried to maintain her composure. As Jang Jun Wu returned home, he was shocked to find Vincenzo standing in his house. However, Jang Jun Wu, unfazed by Vincenzo's threat, pointed the gun at his own head. Just then, the police arrived. Jun Wu, calling Vincenzo a mafia scumbag, denied being Jang Han Siak, resulting in Vincenzo's arrest. Cha Young arrived at the police station and encountered Jun Wu returning. She angrily punched him in the face, furious for being deceived for so long. He was responsible for countless deaths, and such people didn't deserve to live. The police, after inspection, realized that Vincenzo's gun was a fake. They also acknowledged that Vincenzo's true mafia identity was a personal matter. Before confronting Jun Wu, Vincenzo had altered his plan. He remembered the Italian revenge principle, give your enemy what they fear most and take away what they cherish. Jang Han Siok's greatest fear was his identity being exposed and Babel collapsing. Vincenzo's first step was to force Jang Han Siok to reveal himself. He knew Prosecutor Jung's objective was to capture Babel's mastermind so he offered his cooperation. In the end, Vincenzo was released, much to Jun Wu's frustration. Vincenzo then met with Jaibert, the man who knew about the gold in the wine cellar. After discovering that Jaibert had told no one outside Junga Plaza except those who provided him with food, Vincenzo offered him a large sum of money to leave and forget about it. Jaibert refused, declaring he would rather die in Junga Plaza. Vincenzo presented him with another pile of money, and the sight of the cash was enough to erase all memories, 
thankfully not including his own identity. Jaibird then presented Vincenzo with a picture he had taken in the gold cellar, claiming it was Vincenzo's, which pleased him. Upon returning, the residents of the building swarmed Vincenzo, eager to know if the gold was real. Vincenzo, claiming it was just an online picture, disappointed them. Miss C.O. then approached him, sharing a spooky story about the gold less basement being haunted, leading him to believe she had gone mad. The next day, the residents discussed the gold cellar, deciding that Vincenzo was not helpful as the gold wasn't his and wouldn't be involved anymore. While they debated, Li Chiao UK approached Vincenzo, wanting to join his side. Just then, a call arrived, informing them that Zhang Han Siak had left his hideout. Vincenzo dispatched his new recruit, Li Chiao UK, to investigate. Seo Siong Wan, the Wusung spy, discovered a recent conflict between Han Seung Hyok and lawyer Choi, suggesting that Han Seung Hyok had aligned with Jang Han Siak. Cha Young, thrilled at the thought of the four of them dividing into two factions, couldn't contain her excitement. She predicted that Jang Han Siak, the weaker side, would be forced to retreat with his tail between his legs. While intriguing, Vincenzo deemed this outcome unlikely. On Jun Wu's side, he drank from a bottle of mineral water and went to shower. He suddenly felt his body stiffen, losing control and sinking to the floor. Realizing Vincenzo's hand in his predicament, he called him, knowing that the mineral water was the key. He was aware that Vincenzo didn't want to kill him but only play games, which was why he was still alive. Vincenzo, having tested the drug's effects on Nam Ju Sung, knew that contact with water would reverse its effects. He was amused to see Jun Wu enraged by the attack. The next day, Jun Wu, frustrated by two near-death experiences in three days, demanded a change of targets. Choi Myung Hee delivered good news the head of Babel's chemical division had passed away. Jun Wu rushed to embrace her, thanking her for healing his broken spirit. The news on TV reported that Director Lee of Babel had died in an accident. Cha Young was outraged, wondering where they were finding so many assassins. Then, someone approached them, bringing up the gold cellar, which shocked both Cha Young and Ju Sung. After they left, Cha Young remembered Vincenzo's earlier mention of the gold being hidden beneath the Naniac Temple, and realized that it was in the temple's secret chamber. Ju Sung felt left out for not being in on the secret. Vincenzo revealed the actual figure 1050 billion one leaving both of them stunned. He had told Cha Young 15 billion won earlier because they weren't close then, which made her frustrated. They then embraced Vincenzo as if he was part of their family, eager to share in the wealth. Though Vincenzo only owned 70% of the gold, with the director keeping 30%, both were thrilled at the prospect. Ju Sung wanted to stand guard at the Naniac Temple entrance with a gun, but Vincenzo cautioned them against overreacting, advising them to act as if they knew nothing for now. After the residents left, Vincenzo and Chief Prosecutor Cho went to the Naniac Temple to retrieve the gold. As they descended into the basement, a gun was pointed directly at Vincenzo. The person holding Vincenzo at gunpoint was none other than Chief Prosecutor Cho Yongan. He claimed he wouldn't harm Vincenzo and only wanted to take a gold bar before leaving. Vincenzo knew that the gold bar contained the guillotine documents that the intelligence agency had lost. Seizing the opportunity when Yong Un wasn't paying attention, Vincenzo snatched the gun and grabbed the gold bar. He examined it but found no bullets in the chamber. Later, it was revealed that Cho Yong Un was an undercover agent for the International Security Intelligence Agency. Cha Young had called Vincenzo numerous times, and finally, he answered. Everyone suspected he was deliberately getting rid of them to find the gold and was on their way to the temple's basement. Cha Young purposely dragged out the time, giving them a chance to clean up the scene. When they arrived, Vincenzo and Cho Yong Un were devoutly praying in front of the Buddha statue. However, Miss Seo noticed a slight instability in the floorboards. After they left, Chief Prosecutor Cho realized that Vincenzo had slipped his coat into the basement, which contained his unique eye scan recognition device, the only one of its kind in the world. They were devastated, close to tears. When the two monks returned, they saw these individuals crying for the first time in their lives and believed they were experiencing a sudden awakening. Upon returning, Vincenzo was still disheartened that nobody believed him. Nam Ju Sung and Cha Young felt they needed time to heal and decided to leave together. When they learned that there was truly gold in the basement, the three embraced in joy. 
but when they heard that they couldn't open the gold vault anymore because the eye scan device was gone, Nam Ju Sung fainted. On Jang Han Seo's side, they were discussing the guillotine documents, unaware that they were buried with the gold. The only way to retrieve them was to demolish the entire building. A news broadcast showed the deceased chemical division head's body being transported to prevent a funeral. Vincenzo recognized the people who had caused trouble in Jumga Plaza they had a blade tattoo. With the chemical division head dead, summoning Jang Han Siok would be challenging. In another development, Jang Han Seo was furious when Han Seung Hyok remarked that even a hunting rifle shot could have killed him. However, now that Jang Han Seok wasn't dead, he was someone who dared to do anything. He had once killed his own father, so even though Han Seo was his brother, his life was in danger. News of Jang Han Seok's upcoming chairmanship spread widely online. Vincenzo saw this as a victory for his first plan, as he had successfully brought Jang Han Seok into the spotlight. On Han Siok's side, he warned his brother about the hunting incident. He had kept him alive so that someone could take his place if he went to prison. During the inauguration ceremony, the two brothers, seemingly affectionate, stood side by side, hugging and posing for photos. Jang Han Siok officially assumed his position as head of Babel. Vincenzo's group set their sights on the new head of the chemical division, who was the right-hand man of the former head. However, the moment the former head died, the new head betrayed him and joined the Babel group. That night, Chiol Wook, disguised as a member of the Two Swords gang, found and apprehended him. Following their instructions, Nam Sin B contacted Park Chan Kai and demanded 2 billion won in cash, threatening to expose his correspondence, orders from the strategic planning room, and their illegal money laundering activities. Then, Vincenzo and Cha Young brought the documents, allowing Prosecutor Young in Kuk to secure a search warrant for the strategic planning room of Babel. The next day, Jang Han Siok, following a summons, arrived at the police station. Reporters and journalists surrounded the entrance, and the news spread like wildfire. Everyone believed Han Siok was innocent, praising his brilliance and charisma. Inside, Jang Han Siok remained calm and confident. Before issuing the search warrant, Vincenzo made a deal with Prosecutor Young. He would leak information about the raid, giving them time to hide the files. The key now was to prove that Jang Han Siok had given the order. Park Chan Kai received a call and immediately ordered his people to move the documents as there wasn't enough time to destroy them. Outside, Nam Ju Sung and Gi Siok were positioned to report every development. The document custodian, heading to the underground parking lot, was intercepted by Vincenzo's team. At the launch event for a new product, the staff cheered with excitement upon seeing Chairman Jang Han Siok return. Vincenzo and Cha Young sat leisurely below, anticipating the drama to unfold. Suddenly, the projector screen displayed a scene of Nam Sin Bi speaking to Park Chan Kai, explicitly naming Chairman Jang Han Siok as the one who gave the order. Then, the scene transitioned to the brutal assault in the swimming pool, followed by a countdown led by Vincenzo. A bucket of paint fell from above. Reporters furiously took pictures as Vincenzo and Cha Young cheered from above, delighted with the spectacle. While Jang Han Seo was secretly pleased, he still played the role of a good brother, pretending to be concerned for his beloved brother. But the prosecutor's team was waiting for him and arrested him on suspicion of ordering the dissolution of the union. At the prosecutor's office, Choi Myung Hee tried to defend Jang Han Siok until she saw the documents from the strategic vision department in their hands. Then, Vincenzo presented the testimony of the drunk driver who hit the head of the delegation, causing his death. Though he knew they would be released after tonight, Vincenzo was thrilled because he had managed to get all four of them investigated at the same time. Inside, Jang Han Seo admitted that he was the one who ordered the dissolution of the union claiming his brother had nothing to do with it. Before the prosecutor could grasp the situation, old chairman H. Wang Jin T arrived and claimed that other forces had framed Jang Han Siok. In the end, they were released. Han Siok didn't forget to tell Han Seo not to take on minor charges in the future, and instead take on more serious ones, which made everyone feel that their brotherly bond was strong. Vincenzo and Cha Young visited Zhong Jia, she gifted Cha Young a hand-knitted scarf and a letter, asking her to read it at home. They also brought her her favorite fish cakes, making her very happy. That evening, Jang Hanaseo met with Vincenzo. 
Han Sio wanted to know if he was included in Vincenzo's plan and if he could be his right hand to take down his brother. But Vincenzo didn't need or want to exploit their family betrayal. Meanwhile, Myung Hee called Han Siok, saying she had come up with a way to take down Vincenzo, using enemies to defeat enemies. At the Jumga Plaza building, teacher Sio talked about the secret basement, leaving everyone speechless. She revealed that she was the one who installed the security system for the secret vault. She was a former systems engineer and a hacker. After hearing that all the workers had died, she had fled. Teacher Sio wanted to help them retrieve the gold, because she knew how to disable the eye scanning system. From that moment on, Mai Rai officially joined their team. At the Ragusang Art Exhibition, Vincenzo and Cha Young posed as a couple, while Chairman Tak and Nam Ju Sung took them to another location. Suddenly, music began to play, and the man Vincenzo had impersonated staged a marriage proposal to his girlfriend. He awkwardly knelt down, proposing and putting a ring on her finger. But the surprise didn't stop there. Everyone around them started cheering and encouraging the couple to kiss. While Vincenzo was still bewildered, Cha Young hugged his neck and gave him a sweet kiss. He hugged her back and they got lost in the moment, making everyone exclaim how beautiful they looked together. For them, this night would be one they'd never forget. In another development, the other couple got together under the witness of the two monks. While looking at Jackson Martin's work, nothing, Cha Young mistakenly believed the lamp was the artwork. Vincenzo saw the rug on the floor and realized that was the legendary nothing. Someone approached them. After the woman with red hair left, they contacted teacher Sio and began to act. Chiol Wook's team outside tried to stall the woman with red hair, while inside, Cha Young's knees were shaking. As the door opened, Teacher Sio had successfully copied all the data. Seeing that they had been discovered, Vincenzo pulled out a card and claimed to be an agent of the International Security Intelligence Agency from Italy investigating the smuggling of artwork. Under pressure, the woman with red hair revealed that the Antonini portrait was smuggled in. Vincenzo and Cha Young were about to celebrate when Vincenzo noticed someone following them. After sending Cha Young to buy something, Vincenzo went out to find him and took a man hostage. However, another man appeared from behind and knocked Vincenzo out. But as he was about to strike, a dove suddenly appeared, followed by a flock of doves that attacked them. Vincenzo took advantage of the situation and subdued all of them. Recognizing the dove as in Zaghai, he let it fly away. As they descended the stairs, Vincenzo tried to conceal what had happened saying that they should stay in the office because it was covered in bird droppings. Cha Young protested, claiming the bird had pooped everywhere, but Vincenzo defended in Zaghai. Meanwhile, Yung Du Hee was being reprimanded for failing to complete her assignment. All the evidence now pointed towards Jun Wu, so Myung Hee told him to flee to New York immediately. This made him furious, but before leaving, he wanted to see Vincenzo's body. The body disposal team informed Vincenzo that Myung Hee's number was in their call history. Soon after, Jun Wu's group received photos of the assassins who had died, but before they could leave, the police arrived and arrested them. Vincenzo received news that Jang Han Siak had also been arrested, making him very happy. Cha Young, seeing Kyung Ya's letter, burst into tears. The next morning, the residents of the apartment complex were overjoyed to hear that Han Siak had been arrested. However, Prosecutor Young in Kuk unexpectedly announced that he had investigated Babel excessively and prosecuted Han Siak without sufficient evidence. The residents realized that the prosecutor had betrayed them. Myung Hee was gleeful about this betrayal. Han Siak was happy, but Cha Young was furious. She wanted to confront in Kuk, but Vincenzo stopped her, urging her to control her emotions and be more cautious. To protect in Kuk, the chief prosecutor suspended him for two weeks as a form of punishment. Nkuk begged the chief to provide him with protection. It turned out that Nkuk had all the evidence to put Han Siak in prison, but he wanted to use it to get a position as the chief prosecutor or higher. However, when he returned home, he found that his house security was disabled and Vincenzo was waiting upstairs. Seeing his wife and children terrified of Vincenzo, Nkuk begged him to kill him but not harm his family. But Vincenzo wasn't going to let him off easy. He would make him suffer as he got what he wanted. Meanwhile, Han Siak wanted to meet with Jiang Bi of the Dichang Daily to publish an advertisement about Babel's electric car. But his goal was to inflate the price of Babel's chemical stock and pull out there was no actual electric car. 
Over dinner, everyone was puzzled about the prosecutor's sudden betrayal. But no matter what happened, they would support Vincenzo to the end. Cha Young wanted to buy a gift for Zhong Jia to cheer her up while she was in the hospital. Vincenzo also wanted to buy something for his mother. But when Cha Young revealed that she knew Zhong Jia was his mother, Vincenzo was shocked. Witnessing his actions, it was easy to see that they were mother and son. Cha Young advised Vincenzo to tell his mother that she was his mother because she didn't have much time left. Vincenzo's mother was delighted to receive the gift and thanked him. Cha Young told her that Vincenzo would take her out the next day. When they left, Vincenzo's mother wanted to reappeal her case. She had thought about it many times and wanted to appeal but lacked the courage. Vincenzo agreed to his mother's request. Back at the house, Cha Young and Ju Sung were upset by the prosecutor's betrayal. But Vincenzo was calm because he had the guillotine files. When they saw the files, they were surprised and wanted to post them on social media. But Vincenzo reasoned that this wouldn't make anyone responsible. After examining the files, Vincenzo revealed that their target was Babel and the Dichang Daily because they had done unethical things, and he wanted to make them fight amongst themselves. At that moment, Han Xiao arrived. He wanted to eliminate his brother so he could legally take over Babel. He approached Vincenzo and Cha Young because they were the only ones who could do this. But when Vincenzo asked him a few economic questions, Han Xiao had no clue and invited him to have a drink. That night, Han Xiao was frustrated that Vincenzo was always targeting his favorite things but didn't know how to get revenge. Myung He suggested that he target Vincenzo's former family. The next morning, Ju Sung revealed that Chairman Jiang Bi of the Dichang Daily was a villain who had murdered his brother to inherit his fortune, but no one suspected him because there was no evidence. While they were hiking, he had pushed his brother off a cliff, and an ecological surveillance camera had captured it, but the intelligence agency had seized the footage. He was also very superstitious and followed the advice of a fortune teller, who had a record of fraud, although he was unaware of it. That evening, Vincenzo had the fake fortune teller arrested, teasing him by saying he would burn him, making the fortune teller afraid to say anything. To bring down Babel and De Chang daily, they all voted to choose someone to pretend to be a fortune teller. That person was none other than Vincenzo. The next day, the fake fortune teller was terrified and said that he had lost his powers, recommending Vincenzo as a more powerful fortune teller. When he arrived, he felt like it was a scam and was about to leave, but Vincenzo pretended to be his brother's spirit. Vincenzo walked toward him, pulling his leg and criticizing him, causing him to become terrified. Vincenzo laughed quietly from outside. After successfully deceiving Jiang Bi, Vincenzo revealed that Babel was killing him slowly and advised him to cut ties with them. To erase his misfortune, he needed to trample on Babel. Otherwise, he would only have five days left to live. Ju Sung then revealed that the guillotine files contained data on Han Siok from middle school, where he had killed four people. If he didn't like someone, he would kill them and collect their watches. At the age of 16, Han Siok was sent to the S for psychological treatment because they were afraid he would become a murderer. His father had used money to cover up all these truths. The next day, the newspapers published articles defaming Babel causing the stock price to plummet. Jiangbi announced that from then on, the Di Chang Daily would publish the truth and advised Han Siok to operate his business legally. But Vincenzo said that defaming Babel wouldn't save Jiangbi's life. They needed to expose Han Siok's wrongdoing. Only by doing so could the spirits of those he had killed forgive him. Then, Vincenzo pretended to be possessed by those spirits and begged for mercy. The next day, television news aired reports about Han Siok's murders from his middle school days, the crimes he had committed without facing any punishment, which angered netizens. Han Siok was confused as to why Jiang Bi had done this and had him followed. After completing his plan, Jiang Bi was allowed to live and thanked Vincenzo. Meanwhile, Yong Un had scheduled a meeting with Vincenzo in the Jumga Plaza parking garage. But when they arrived, they were attacked by the prosecutor's team. Han Siak, seeing the pictures of Jiang Bi, realized that Vincenzo had used him. But he still didn't know how Vincenzo could know these secrets. Myung He also showed him information about Vincenzo's mother, and that she wanted to re-appeal the case against Chairman Diak Bi. Yong Un revealed that In Kuk had once heard about the guillotine files and wanted to eradicate the corruption within them. However, after the files disappeared, 
he had become a traitor. Yong Un had felt for a long time that he had other ambitions involving the guillotine. Vincenzo returned home, only to find an intruder and chased after him. But when he reached the rooftop, he lost his trail. Unexpectedly, Jiang Bi's body fell from above, and Vincenzo was accused of murdering him. Vincenzo declared he didn't do it. But the police said that Jiang Bi had reported to them that Vincenzo had kidnapped him. As the police were putting handcuffs on him, Vincenzo took them down and escaped. The assassin was about to leave when he bumped into Siak Du. Seeing that he wasn't from around there, they both immediately charged at each other, ready to fight. Just then, his men came back with beer but just stood there watching. After escaping, Vincenzo called Cha Young and told her that Han Siak knew everything and they needed to prove his innocence. Meanwhile, Siak Du had captured the assassin in black. Han Siak was furious that he still couldn't catch Vincenzo. Cha Young brought the assassin to Vincenzo to investigate him. After learning the whereabouts of his accomplice, they all decided to go there. Vincenzo took the three assassins to the police station to report them and prove his innocence. It turned out they had received orders from someone else to go to the De Chang Daily and abduct Jiang Bi. They then used his phone to make a fake report, accusing Vincenzo. When Vincenzo returned, they lured him to the rooftop to frame him for everything. All the evidence was recorded in the black box of the car they used to transport him. The next morning, Park Du Hun was arrested for being an accomplice in the murder of Jiang Bi. Vincenzo went to thank Diak Du, saying he was exonerated thanks to him. Siak Du saw this and wanted Vincenzo to model for his company. Again, Vincenzo was unable to do anything, making Han Siak very angry. But Myung Hee had the prosecutor's office handle the case. Outside, Seung Hyuk told Myung Hee that she needed to stop Han Siak's actions because they were crossing their limits. But Myung Hee said he needed to distinguish between friends and enemies. The next morning, the pair of doves came to take Jong Ja for a photo shoot. Cha Young dragged Vincenzo into the photo, wanting him to have a picture with his mother. It was the first time they had hugged his mother for a photo, and they both felt emotional. Afterward, Cha Young left so that Vincenzo could talk to his mother alone. Jong Ja kept talking about her son without knowing he was standing behind her. She felt guilty and expressed her regret for not being able to bring him back. Seeing his mother's love, Vincenzo was filled with sorrow and tears but didn't dare tell her that he was her son. The scene shifted to Han Siak. After many days of wondering why Jiang Bi had access to his past data, he concluded that Vincenzo was exploiting the power of the guillotine files. To eliminate the guillotine, Han Siak seemed to have a plan to destroy Junga Plaza. Soon after, someone arrived to fix the gas line in the restaurant. At the hospital, after taking his mother back, she hugged Vincenzo, but he couldn't say anything and felt emotional. Outside, Cha Young advised him to wait a little longer before revealing the truth to her. That evening, everyone was celebrating the couple, Chiol Wook and Yeon Jin, because they had both been married and had children. Meanwhile, outside, someone was waiting to set off a bomb. At that moment, the fire department arrived finding the place filled with gas and evacuating everyone. They discovered that someone had deliberately cut the gas line, causing the leak. Vincenzo saw a timer and sensed danger. He took it and threw it away. When the timer hit the ground, it caught fire, but thankfully nothing happened. He soon realized that the woman from that morning was the one responsible, and the person behind it was none other than Babel. But Vincenzo didn't understand who had called the fire department. It was Han Sio. Han Siak was furious and cursed out his brother. Just then, Myung Hee brought a picture of Vincenzo's mother. The scene shifted to Han Sio, who had come to tell Vincenzo that the wound on his forehead was because he had called 911 to save everyone. Seeing that Han Sio was on his side, Vincenzo agreed to help him in the future. The Babel Tower was on the verge of collapse, and Vincenzo would punish everyone who built it. Kang Ho Chul was released from prison, and Myung Hee approached him. At the same time, Han Siak visited the hospital to see Vincenzo's mother. At home, Vincenzo looked at the picture of himself with his mother and wanted to visit her. After confirming that Jong Ja was Vincenzo's mother, Han Siak called Myung Hee. While buying food, Cha Young called Vincenzo and told him to tell his mother the truth when he saw her. That night, Kang Ho Chul snuck into Jong Ja's room and murdered her. When Vincenzo arrived, all that was left of his mother was a lifeless body. 
He collapsed, holding her hand, but couldn't utter a word. After reviewing the camera footage, they saw that he had subdued the bodyguard, and Vincenzo remembered that he had met him before. The two villains, having achieved their goal, danced and celebrated. Vincenzo immediately obtained Kang Ho Chul's information and went to his house. He stormed in, his eyes full of hatred, and punched him repeatedly. He interrogated him relentlessly, but Kang Ho Chul refused to reveal the person behind it. Myung Hee learned that Han Seo and Seung Hyuk had sided with Vincenzo. Outside, Kang Ho Chul was afraid and ran to Han Seok's house. Vincenzo single-handedly defeated all the guards. Inside, they were still arguing heatedly about the betrayal. The criminal, covered in blood, entered, terrifying everyone. Then, a gunshot sent him to his grave. Vincenzo was the one who fired the shot. He pointed his gun at the group, making them tremble in fear. He fired wildly, destroying everything, but deep down, he didn't want to kill those who had murdered his mother. He wanted them to suffer humiliation and endure more pain than death itself. He shot Jun Wu in the ear, warning him that he wouldn't be safe if he tried anything else. Later, he went to the morgue and looked at his mother's body, unable to contain his emotions. He called out to her, but she could no longer hear him. He thought if he and his mother hadn't met, she might still be alive. Cha Young comforted him, saying that although the time he spent with his mother was short, it was probably the happiest time of her life. Vincenzo sat down and read the letter his mother had left behind, touched by her final words for him. Even though the time they spent together was brief, it was probably the happiest time they had shared as mother and son. The next day, Vincenzo received a handgun from Chairman Choi. He was officially facing off against Jun Wu. The people gathered outside Vincenzo's office to comfort him, wanting to help him defeat Babel, and from then on, they would all be his family. On the day of the Babel Tower bidding, Vincenzo called Jun Wu to challenge him, wanting him to experience humiliation. Vincenzo's plan began. At his command, Assistant Ju Sung took the Jungga Plaza residents to buy suits and split them into two groups to participate in the Babel Tower conference. Many high-ranking government officials attended the conference. The residents of Jungga Plaza pretended to be service staff during the conference and rolled a huge cake into the hall. When the Babel bidding ceremony began, officials enthusiastically bid for the floor they liked. Many people competed to bid for the most luxurious and expensive floors. After winning the bid, they had to sign a contract promising to donate to Babel for life. In another room, Vincenzo and Cha Young monitored the bidding activity on a screen. As the contract came into effect, H. Wang Gu, who had been bribed to kill Cha Young's father, entered, locked the door, and caused chaos in the hall. He had attached bombs to himself and the cake. No one dared to move and had to follow his demands. Vincenzo had previously instructed H. Wang Gu to attach fake bombs to himself, by time, and then release him and his men once the task was complete. Now, H. Wang Gu demanded that everyone destroy their Babel Tower purchase registration papers and kneel down to swear off their relationship with Jun Wu. Myung Hee wondered if the bombs attached to him were real. To prove that the bombs on him were real, H. Wang Gu said he would count down five seconds, and the bomb in the model tower would explode. But he didn't realize that Vincenzo had given him real bombs. The bombs detonated, and Vincenzo's plan to eliminate H. Wang Gu was successful. After all, H. Wang Gu was the one who had killed Cha Young's father, Attorney Hong. The people there panicked and tried to escape, but the doors were locked. The security guards outside ignored the screams inside. At that moment, Mai Rai, pretending to be a computer engineer, contacted the executive board, reporting that the bomb in the cake was about to explode. She reminded everyone that the conference was being recorded and the only way to survive was to quickly swallow their Babel bidding contract papers and loudly announce their position and unit so they could leave. The high-ranking officials immediately grabbed their bidding contracts, stuffed them into their mouths, knelt down, shouted their titles, and swore never to do business with Babel again. Jun Wu tried to stop them, but survival was more important, so no one listened to him. Now, Vincenzo had the evidence of the officials' bribery, so he kept his promise and let them go. He only kept the four members of Jun Wu's group, and the timer counted down to the last second. But instead of an explosion, champagne sprayed out from the cake. The plan was a success thanks in part to the information Vincenzo had obtained from Jang Han Seo who had told him about the bidding event when they played ice hockey. 
After the success of the bidding conference, the residents of Jumga Plaza began their next battle, using the video footage they had collected. They threatened the high-ranking officials with these videos, forcing them to buy Babel apartments, withdraw from the Jumga Plaza project, increase patrols around the area, and donate all their bribes to a charity. Jun Wu received a document from the higher authorities, asking him to review the construction permits for Babel Tower. He thought of a plan to counter this and began playing the family card. He talked about how Jang Han Seo's mother had asked him to take care of his brother before she died. Seeing Han Seo's apparent emotional response, Jun Wu pressed on, offering to hand over the Babel subsidiary to Han Seo. Han Seo was moved, shedding tears and thanking Jun Wu profusely. The scene shifted to Han Seung Hyuk, who, after all the officials had turned their backs on him, needed to find a different way to secure political connections. He targeted a senator running for election, using the guillotine files as bait and successfully meeting with him. The senator had previously met Han Seung Hyuk's subordinate and knew about the guillotine files, which Vincenzo held. So the senator wanted to think of a way to counter this. Meanwhile, Vincenzo's team discovered a secret cooperation between Babel and an urban real estate developer that received advance information to buy land at a low price and then sell it for a profit. Among them, Congressman Park was indirectly involved. Vincenzo didn't expect to find such a surprise while investigating Babel. In another development, the accomplice of the man who had died from the bomb explosion went to Hyung Hee to apologize and express regret for what he had done. But Myung Hee, cunning as ever, dealt with him mercilessly, sending him to the naked chicken watching afterlife. Within a short time, Jun Wu gathered the high-ranking officials who had attended the conference, assuring them that everything had been settled. He then offered them a lot of gold as bribes. Seeing the gold, the officials' eyes lit up, and they immediately agreed. The scene shifted to Han Seung Hyuk, who met privately with Han Seo to celebrate a brighter future. He fabricated many crimes that Vincenzo had committed as a Mafia member in Italy. He claimed that Interpol would be arriving within 24 hours to arrest Vincenzo and extradite him to Italy. Once Vincenzo was gone, they could do whatever they wanted. This made Hanasio extremely happy because he would be able to defeat Jun Wu earlier than expected. Hanasio then met with Vincenzo at the ice rink to give him urgent news. They both pointed guns at each other having anticipated each other's intentions. Interpol agents suddenly stormed in, intending to arrest Vincenzo and extradite him. As Vincenzo was pondering his options, Chairman Jang unexpectedly shot him, leaving him dazed and collapsing. Seeing this, a complacent officer approached to check on the situation, only to be tackled by Vincenzo, who then grabbed the officer's gun and threatened him. The situation had now reversed. They were taken to a mysterious room. There, Vincenzo didn't hesitate to pull the trigger, killing three police officers. He then warned the person behind the plot to accuse him that Interpol had no evidence to prove him wrong and couldn't simply arrest him. Turning to Chairman Zhang, he instructed him to tell his brother not to act rashly and wait for death to come gradually. Zhang Hansiak relayed this to the police and Jun Wu. However, Jun Wu was suspicious about Chairman Zhang having a gun. He said he wanted to kill Vincenzo himself, otherwise, a mafia like him wouldn't leave anyone alone. Despite this, Jun Wu was still uneasy and questioned how Vincenzo had known about Interpol's arrival and was prepared for it. Chairman Zhang stammered that he didn't know anything about it, but his representative quickly noticed something was amiss. Upon returning, the representative asked Chairman Zhang if he was hiding something, but Zhang Hansiak insisted that everything had happened as described. In reality, it was Chairman Zhang who had informed Vincenzo that Interpol was coming. He and Vincenzo had prepared to stage a play to turn the tables. He even provided the police officers with evidence of Paolo's bribes and instructed them to investigate the ghost company called G Mountain before leaving. This further impressed Zhang Han Siak with Vincenzo's cunning, and he even carried Vincenzo's bag for him. Afterward, Vincenzo shot him in the hand, pretending to be hurt. Thinking back on this event, Jang found it rather enjoyable. The next morning, Paolo summoned Vincenzo to his room. There, he gave Vincenzo a hot air balloon ticket, hinting that danger was lurking. He said that Vincenzo would use it someday, so he should take it. It was simply a gesture of affection because Paolo felt Vincenzo was a man of principle. After receiving the heartfelt ticket, Vincenzo continued his game. 
Meanwhile, Chairman H. Wang was about to go fishing when he received a video recording of him having dinner with high-ranking officials. Then, he received an invitation to a cafe. Unexpectedly, when he arrived, he saw the same people from that dinner party present. The loudspeaker suddenly played the recording of their conversation from that night, forcing H. Wang Jin to hastily unplug it. He immediately called Chairman Jun Wu to inquire about the situation, but Jun Wu didn't understand how the information had been leaked, considering the dinner was held at his house. Of course, Vincenzo was behind this. In front of the press, he and his team announced that they would reveal shocking truths and wrongdoings related to Babel Tower. This news reached Jun Wu as he was sitting with Jiang Han Xiao and Choi Myung He, but they couldn't find any evidence of a bug. Things began to go downhill for these villains. Choi Myung He received a lawsuit against Babel Group and needed to find a solution. Hong Cha Young came to her, pulling out the recording as evidence to prepare for the lawsuit. But instead of being afraid, Choi Myung He challenged her. Hong Cha Young also sided with Vincenzo. He was sitting with Representative H. Wang, saying that he had originally intended to spare him, but because H. Wang had dared to call Interpol, he would let him die. Hearing this, the representative signaled for his bodyguards to enter. But Vincenzo didn't worry. He pulled out his gun and shot two bodyguards in the legs, scaring the others, who fled. H. Wang Soong's face turned pale, and he begged for mercy. He was ruthless in taking action but trembled in fear when faced with a gun. At the same time, Jun Wu was sleeping when a group of people broke into his house to teach him a lesson. Luckily, Jun Wu managed to escape, but he stepped on a nail and was injured. On the other hand, Chairman Choi was also being pursued by a group of people and was brought to meet with Chief Kim. He said that he and Prosecutor Young in Kuk were close. He heard that if they wanted to open the secret vault beneath Juma Plaza, they needed to find Chairman Choi but he said he didn't know anything and didn't know what to do. Chief Kim knew that Choi often designed security systems for many places. Therefore, he wanted Choi to find a solution, or his entire family would be killed. The next day, at Chairman H. Wang Soong's office, he and Myung Hee were trying to figure out how to handle the situation. They didn't want to be hunted like prey all the time. To protect Jun Wu and themselves, Chairman H. Wang decided to put Jun Wu in jail temporarily as it was the only safe place for now. Prosecutor Choi relayed this message to Jun Wu. Although he was reluctant, it was the best option for now, so the next day, an indictment was filed to put Jun Wu in jail for a short period. Before leaving, he still arrogantly instructed Jang Han Seo to take care of the company. Han Seo finally expressed his opposition, saying that he would stop all the illegal projects. These words were like a bucket of cold water thrown in Jun Wu's face. After everything that had happened, Vincenzo and Jang Han Seo went out to eat, enjoying their initial sense of victory. They used evil to destroy evil. There, Jang Han Seo expressed his admiration for Vincenzo and wanted to call him brother. Vincenzo didn't hesitate to agree. The next day, Vincenzo went to the prison where Jun Wu was being held to see him. Through the bars, Jun Wu still felt smug, thinking he was safe. But Vincenzo's next words filled him with fear. Everything had been orchestrated by Vincenzo, from Jun Wu being hunted to Chairman H. Wang's suggestion to put him in jail, it was all part of Vincenzo's plan. Hearing this, Jun Wu finally showed his fear when facing someone as skilled as Vincenzo. He continued, saying the reason he didn't want to kill a scumbag like Jun Wu was because he wanted him to be like a mouse toyed with by a full cat. He would toy with Jun Wu until he witnessed the downfall of Babel Tower. Just as Jun Wu thought he might be released from prison the next day, his hopes were dashed. Vincenzo pulled out a USB and said that the evidence of the ghost company he obtained from the Ragus Sang exhibition would ensure that Jun Wu would spend at least another month in jail. Even if Prosecutor Choi wanted to help, it wouldn't be any sooner. He then left, leaving Jun Wu fuming. But things didn't go smoothly for Vincenzo forever. The next day, his friend from Italy visited and told him about his family. Several advisors of the Cassano family had been murdered by the Luciano family, and Paolo was also being investigated by the police, so he wasn't paying attention to this. His friend advised Vincenzo to return to Italy to save the family. Without hesitation, that night, he returned home, packed his bags, and prepared to go to Italy. 
Before leaving, Vincenzo called Chairman Choi, but he didn't answer because he was searching for information for Chief Kim. By now, he had found something. Chairman Choi found four people who worked as security experts, and one of them was at Juma Plaza. This person was none other than the piano teacher, and she had become a target. The next day, Vincenzo said goodbye to everyone in the law firm and the people in the building. Even though he was only leaving for a short time, everyone felt like an important part of their lives was missing. That evening, as Vincenzo left, Chief Kim sent people to the building to capture Teacher Seo and the monks. He used the people in the building to intimidate a CEO to unlock the basement for them. With no choice, CEO Mighty had to comply. But when they went to the room, it was just dusty. Taking advantage of their distraction, CEO Mighty ran out. She met with Hong Cha Young and asked for help. But seeing the group of ruthless and numerous thugs, even someone like Hong Cha Young was defeated. Suddenly, Vincenzo appeared, saying he had come back because he forgot to feed the dove. He then charged in to take down the thugs. The people in the building were energized and came to help Vincenzo. They weren't ordinary people there were gangsters and boxers. In a flash, the thugs were subdued. Chief Kim, the right-hand man of Congressman Park Soon Jun, also got a hit from Hong Cha Young. Back in the office, everyone was chatting. Chairman Choi was curious to know how Vincenzo had moved the gold. He readily told Chairman Choi about discovering the vault. That day, the two monks in the building were talking to Vincenzo about the secret vault. They said they were meditating when they got electrocuted, which is how they discovered it. Vincenzo finally revealed the truth about the vault, surprising the monks. Afterward, with Xiom's help, they successfully opened the vault beneath. The large gold bars were then transported discreetly by everyone, from suitcases to handbags. The plan to move the gold was carried out quietly. Chairman Choi was impressed with how they handled it. As for the guillotine files, Vincenzo had hidden them in a place known only to him. He couldn't reveal it. He then told Hong Cha Young how he had resolved the matter. Money can't buy everything, but a lot of money can buy anything. This time, he spent $80 million to ensure his family's safety. Back inside, Vincenzo's assistant found evidence of Congressman Park's corruption. The next day, information about his corruption and land purchases under other people's names was exposed and posted on bulletin boards. This began to trouble him, and he wanted Prosecutor Choi to handle it, but she said, if it were that easy to deal with, it wouldn't have come to this. To postpone the Babel Tower lawsuit, he pressured the court to issue a postponement order. But Vincenzo and Hong Cha Young weren't worried because they had a countermove, the guillotine files. As a result, the trial went ahead as planned, infuriating Prosecutor Choi and leaving her helpless. The day of the trial arrived. Chairman Han Seung was intently watching the lawsuit through a camera. Everyone was present. The trial was conducted with both sides' representatives arguing. As soon as Vincenzo took the stand, he presented compelling evidence, a video of Babel employees bribing high-ranking officials. However, the faces of some people had been blurred, leaving Choi Myung Hee and the chairman confused and helpless. During the break in the trial, in the bathroom, Vincenzo met Sung and Kuk. He told his old friend that he was disappointed that he was protecting the villains, he gave Soon a final chance and reminded him to behave properly. It was also his last chance to escape death. The next day, the accused and those involved in the Babel Tower case were arrested, and the court declared their wrongdoing. As a result, the Yunga Plaza building officially ceased to be owned by Babel Group. Everyone in the building celebrated, embracing each other. But for Vincenzo, his work wasn't over yet. He met with Jun Wu and showed him a model of Babel Tower that had been shot to pieces, signifying Jun Wu's downfall. Jun Wu was furious and said that if he was released from prison early, he would make Vincenzo pay. But Vincenzo wasn't afraid. He was waiting for Jun Wu to be released so he could deal with him. The saying, as you wish, came true. Prosecutor Choi found a way to get Jun Wu out. She met with Congressman Park and said she would take the blame for everything from the bribery to the wrongdoing. At the same time, Soon and Kuk, despite Vincenzo's warning, recklessly released those involved in the Babel Tower case and celebrated. But it was his last meal. Vincenzo, without a word, went to find Soon and Kuk and sent him flying off the building. The scene shifted to Choi Myung-hee, who was taking the blame and being arrested. But Jun Wu's release was discreet and unknown to everyone. 
It seemed he wanted to get revenge on Vincenzo in his own way. His first move was to have someone kidnap Hong Cha Young. Then, he went to Chairman Zhang Han Seo's office, punched him, and took him away. That night, Vincenzo received a letter containing blood and Hong Cha Young's jewelry. Knowing that she was in danger, he went to find her and received a call from Jun Wu. He wanted Vincenzo to meet him to settle their score. When they arrived, Jun Wu didn't want to do it himself. He handed a bat to Jang Han Seo and asked him to beat Vincenzo. With no choice, Jang Han Seo took the bat but hit Jun Wu instead. He risked his life to protect them so they could escape. This enraged Jun Wu, and he fired a shot at Hong Cha Young. Seeing this, Han Seo stepped in to stop Jun Wu's reckless act. But Jun Wu had no intention of stopping. He shot Han Seo in the stomach, sending him to his grave. All that was left was to take care of the other two, and he could flee according to his plan. As he aimed at Vincenzo, he realized he was out of bullets. Taking advantage of this, Vincenzo fought back. Jun Wu, no match for Vincenzo, fled the scene. Vincenzo called for an ambulance, but it was too late for Han Seo. His injuries were too severe, and in his final moments, he called Vincenzo, Big Bro. Vincenzo responded, confirming their bond. With those last words, Han Seo closed his eyes for the final time, ending his part in this drama. At the hospital, Cha Young was lucky to survive the shooting. When she woke up, Vincenzo tried to be optimistic, but he was filled with guilt. Cha Young knew what he was thinking and comforted him, telling him not to blame himself. Their final battle was about to begin, and Vincenzo would likely leave Korea after this. The scene shifted back to earlier when Jun Wu had given Han Seo a watch. Han Seo had always felt something was off about the watch and had it surgically examined. He discovered a tracking device inside. He retaliated by placing a similar device in Jun Wu's house. Before dying, Han Seo gave Vincenzo his phone. Jun Wu's location could be tracked on this phone. Vincenzo then gave the secret files and the device to team leader Choi, hoping he could use them wisely. This gesture touched team leader Choi, who realized Vincenzo completely trusted him. Meanwhile, Han Seung Hyuk was preparing the appropriate charges to surrender. He only needed to sign the papers and would be safe from Vincenzo. Just then, Vincenzo called him and gave him a three-hour deadline to get Myung Hee out of prison. He would spare him if he did this. Shortly after, Jun Wu also requested that Han Seung Hyuk do the same. So now he had no choice but to help Myung Hee escape from prison. His law firm was then investigated by the prosecutor's office. As soon as Myung Hee was released from prison, Vincenzo called her, playing her the recording of his conversation with Han Seung Hyuk. She immediately returned to her law firm, grabbed her phone, and secretly contacted Jun Wu. Jun Wu asked her to transfer his money and assets, and he would be on a boat to Mexico that night. Myung Hee then completed the asset transfer and fled. The scene shifted to the courthouse, where reporters were waiting to get a scoop from Han's representative. The representative blamed everything on Myung Hee when he received a call from Jun Wu. Jun Wu cursed Han, calling him a good for nothing, making Han cringe. He didn't know where Jun Wu was hiding, but he could hear their conversation. Suddenly, two strangers emerged from the crowd and fatally stabbed Han. Han Seung Hyuk was dead on the spot. In another development, team leader Choi was able to open Han Seo's phone and discovered Jun Wu's location. Vincenzo immediately went after him, while team leader Choi followed Myung Hee. When Myung Hee returned home to grab her passport and flee, she found Vincenzo waiting inside. Her bodyguards were quickly dealt with by team leader Choi. The money Jun Wu had Myung Hee transfer was successfully hacked to another location by Mai Rai. Vincenzo took Myung Hee away, and the police, upon receiving a report, issued a nationwide warrant for his arrest. Myung Hee was taken to a warehouse and brutally tortured, but she remained defiant, blaming Vincenzo for being just like Jun Wu. He didn't care, dousing her with gasoline. Myung Hee was a monster and deserved punishment. The flames engulfed Myung Hee as she struggled wildly, ending her life of crime. The scene shifted to Jun Wu's location, which was on a ship. Everyone arrived to prevent his escape. The group fought back, and Chiol Wook was unfortunately stabbed by Jun Wu. Vincenzo appeared and shot Jun Wu in the leg, preventing his escape. As Chiol Wook lay dying, he had some final words for Vincenzo. He was close to death, but luckily, someone in the group, 
who had been a nurse, brought along a first aid kit and managed to save Chiol Wook's life. As the police were approaching, Vincenzo took Jun Wu in his car and left the scene. The residents stayed behind to block the police cars, giving Vincenzo time to escape. When Jun Wu woke up, he found himself tied to a chair in an abandoned warehouse. A drill was ready to end his life. He begged for mercy, but Vincenzo was unmoved. He slowly began to execute Jun Wu. The electric drill slowly penetrated Jun Wu's heart. Before dying, Vincenzo took Jun Wu's watch as a trophy. Jun Wu was left alone in the warehouse, enduring the pain as he waited for death to come. Vincenzo then met up with team leader Choi and assistant Nak, who were waiting for him. As Vincenzo prepared to leave, Chai Young appeared. She ignored her pain and wanted to see him, but didn't want to say goodbye. A year later, Babel Group announced that their subsidiaries would be taken over by the court. The nanny's case was reopened, and the truth was revealed. She had no intention of killing anyone. She had acted in self-defense after being violated. This belated truth was a gift to comfort her soul. Team leader Choi was reinstated at the National Intelligence Agency. The temple began organizing marriage blessing ceremonies for couples. Everything had returned to its rightful place. As for Cha Young, she continued to receive letters from Vincenzo for a year. Each letter contained a picture of an island, hinting that he was there. The scene shifted to the anniversary of the diplomatic relations between Korea and Italy. Cha Young was present at the event. A familiar figure greeted Cha Young. It was Vincenzo, whom she had missed day and night. Vincenzo was now the head of the family in Italy. He used his gold to build a deserted island abroad. The rest of the gold was hidden in Cha Young's house. Another part was hidden in Mai Rai's piano. They shared many heartfelt words and finally shared a goodbye kiss. Vincenzo had to leave with the diplomatic delegation. They bid farewell and promised to see each other again soon. Vincenzo was an anti-hero who did what he wanted, punished the wicked, and brought justice to the world. This is the end of the story. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't hesitate to give us a like and subscribe for more videos. Goodbye and see you in our next videos.